Hello, welcome down to some Griffin's occasional series in MATLAB tutorials. Uh, today you know, I'm looking at this particular homework problem. Uh, you can just about see it up there from the University of Maryland. So we're looking at the vertex of a cube and you're rotating it through the center of projection. So I'm not going to go through this line by line. Your man or the student derives the formula here. So x prime and y prime are the new coordinates, f is the focal length, and then uh, i and k are the original values, which we'll have a look at in a second. So, just so down there, just so you have a chance to see this on YouTube, he proves the formula. Again, I'm not too interested in how he proved it. And then we're to do it in MATLAB here. So, we have the image here, where the mouse is. We're rotating it by whatever 10 degrees or 10 radians doesn't really matter and you can see the result over here and then <coughs> when this bit here we want to fill the missing bits with white or black or green or whatever it is in this particular case it's white <coughs> excuse me sorry for that so we're looking this is quite complicated remember where's the the zero zero in the source is in the top left hand corner this, when you're doing the rotation, the zero zero is here. Other things to you have to remember that we're spinning this, we're spinning this one around the center. So you have to create an empty matrix, the same size as the original one on the left hand side, and there will not be a, a, there won't be a one to one mapping. In other words, pixel four four will not land on pixel four five or Pixel 99 will not land on pixel 11, 11. Pixel 99 might land on pixel 11, a quarter, 12, three quarters. So you have to interpolate the values for the new one in here. So in this solution here, uh, the student did bilinear interpolation. Now in MATLAB, this is very simple. You can just use IM rotate. And then in IM rotate, you can select whether it's bilinear interpolation or whether it's cubic interpolation. Or for that matter, you can just do a, you know, the nearest neighbor. And obviously, the nearest neighbor would be quickest, bilinear would be second quickest, and a, a cubic by cubic would be the slowest or third quickest, whichever way you want to look at it. So, a MATLAB will do this for you. It's only this is just as a programming exercise how to do bilinear interpolation, and it's a perfect example of nested for loops and an if statement. Now the student gave a solution uh, in this here, so we just go back to I took that solution and I published it. So just to be clear about this. This work is not mine, it was set by the University of Maryland and some student uh, submitted the work. So, okay, I'm just commenting on it here. So, I published it. There are some of the commands that we used. As before, we cleared the screen, we cleared the workspace and we closed all figures. We read in the figure. Now, I read in... I did a screen grab of the solution, which is, to be honest, fairly blurry on my screen. So that's why I showed the original one. Remember, if you want to get it, it's on the web at the University of Maryland, uh, CMSC 828D, Homework 3, etc. So, and that's what we want to get. So I did a screen grab of that myself, and then... I'll just comment on this now. I might do it in great detail. So we read in the source image, which is flowers. Uh, we convert it to grayscale. And remember, in the uh, the native format is U and eight, unsigned integer eight, to allow you to take the values from naught to two fifty five. Now, because we're spinning and we're taking half values and quarter values, etc., we have to do a cast operator here to double. We set up. The initial parameters, the focal length is 250. There's our angular rotation. So there's cos, there's sine, and then image 2. That would be our blank, and we filled it with zeros. And we're making it the same size as the original. And remember, in these four lines here, remember the center of the image. Just flick back here. Remember, zero, 0 is there. 
not here and we have to get this rotation to work we have to make the zero zero there so these four lines were getting the zero zero to be in the center of the image or the center of the image or where you want to look at it here now slow down here a little can I get everything in one go so we have a nested four because remember you have to go along row one column one row one column two row one column three row one column four row one column five row one column n row two column one row two column two row two column three row two column four row two column whatever you're having row three column one etc now if you're new to nested for loops and this is a mystery sorry yeah i just don't you know, this is not the place to do it in that level of detail so we have a pair of nested for loops and we want to go through it here we're getting here on the the formula that your man derived uh, we're getting the new values of x and y okay and then remember row one it's just to get the position it's remember this is to work out because we're going from the center of the image we check here whether the new values are inside um, the image ID and if they are now you have to do some bilinear interpolation so you're probably saying to yourself you went a little quickly through that handsome so just I mentioned it before so I did this screen grab uh, of an image from Wikipedia okay again I'm not going to go through the exact maths but remember I said before say pixel 4 4 will land on pixel 5 and a quarter pixel 7 and a half so this is r roughly what we're doing here so just say the pixel lands here in green well you have to work out the what these two y values here you have to linearly interpolate the value there we're here you have to linearly interpolate I think I may have said y there and you, these are x so there's the x there's the x go away you linearly interpolate the x value you linearly interpolate the y value and then you get the final value here so you have to do work out uh, the weighted value now if you take it by cubic um, you get a more accurate answer but obviously it's more computer intensive and the programming is a bit more detailed so in this if statement here we're doing the linear interpolation I'm going to leave it there for you to see because I'm not going to go through it line by line it's there if it's outside uh, where am I going if it's outside uh, you set the intensity to 255 to white and then there you've the image rotate the new image will be whatever the intensity value is that's derived from there okay and you've done a little backward mapping there sorry about that popping up so there's that bilinear interpolation again carry on I'm just doing the subplots down here there's the red in image and there's the one that's rotated hope that's okay hope that helps a little and thanks for listening bye